Hello, everybody. Hearts Abandoned Ministries here. This is Rhonda. Welcome back. Okay, so today I am going to present a teaching and we're going to start kind of like a Bible study type get together teaching that I'm going to split up into a bunch of different recordings. I happen to be having a Bible study at my house on Monday nights now. I have done this Bible study before. I have organized it and written it up myself to the podcast. Let me introduce it after we pray. So let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for this time, God. I thank you for the honor and the privilege to be able to declare your name and your glory, God, on any such platform as what we have today to do that on. So I pray, God, that you would go before this message. I ask that your anointing would be on it. They don't need to hear my words, Lord. They need to hear you. And so I pray that they would hear you through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so I call this Bible study or I called it a couple of years ago, how does your garden grow? And there was a purpose to that, but essentially what we're going to be studying here and talking about are the essential core um, uh, necessary, I guess you would say, necessary roots of uh, beliefs or whatever of a Christian person, the soil condition of our heart. And I believe that's really, really important for getting into the other areas that we're going to get into, which is our identity in Jesus Christ, our authority in Jesus Christ, and inevitably the gifts that the Holy Spirit has for us. So that's way down the road. So just don't panic. You start talking about gifts and people start panicking. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, that's okay. Give me some time. We're going to discuss other things first before we even get there, okay? The first thing is the parable of the sower. And what the Lord put on my heart when I wrote this Bible study was there had to be a purpose for parables. We know that Jesus spoke in parables in the Bible a lot. When he sat with his disciples, more times than not, he spoke in parables. When you talk to people who aren't familiar with the Bible or, um, you know, maybe they're a non-believer, I don't know, um, most likely, they would say, well, all he did was speak in riddles. I don't get it. Well, on the contrary, it wasn't riddles, it was parables. There was a, a, a purpose to those parables in that Jesus wanted to express a teaching type way where it would bring spiritual truths out and reveal them. I was talking to a friend the other day when we were doing this Bible study here at my house. She was, she was here studying and I said, more times than not, if you read carefully when Jesus was speaking, as he was either answering a question that was asked of him or proposing a thought, he spoke in questions, meaning I believe that as Jesus would present questions back to us as his answers, he deliberately did that to make us think. Hardly ever do you see or read Jesus answering a question that he was posed in a straightforward answer. He would either give an example of something else happening. He would give an example of a thought process or a uh, heart condition, or he would then turn around and ask another question. He would literally ask you a question. Well, the people in the Bible, his disciples, the Pharisees, whoever, he would ask them questions in order to answer their question. And so 
when we get to the parable of the sower, there was something really key that was stated in Mark 4, Mark chapter 4, verse 13. Jesus says, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? Ah, what does that mean? That just proved it to me even more that my thought process, when I read the writings, the words of Jesus, I think, wow, Jesus always wanted somebody to be thinking about what they were thinking about. He always wanted somebody to be thinking about what they know or what they didn't know. And what he's stating here in Mark chapter 4, verse 13 do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? Considering that this parable has to do with the condition of the ground of the farmer that he was using as an example of the condition of our heart. He was giving many examples in what the ground condition was like for that farmer and how in different situations, one could or could not grow something or how that seed would grow in that condition. What Jesus was trying to express when he says, how then will you understand all the parables if you don't understand this one, is directly correlated to the condition of your heart. The soil condition of the ground is the metaphor or the description that he's giving of the condition of our heart. Therefore, if we don't understand this parable, if we don't get where the condition of our heart is and how this parable is teaching that, then how will we understand any of the other parables? Because any of the other parables can be completely and totally related to the seed that would fall into the condition of that soil, the soil being our heart. If you've listened to me at all on um, any of my Facebook videos, YouTube videos, messages, whatever, I will always, I, I tended to pick up this line that I use to close them. And that was this. I pray that the smallest seed of this message goes into the deep, deep, deep prepared soil of your heart. And it plants itself and brings forth life and life abundantly. Okay, well, that came from uh, the notion that no one could be listening to any kind of teaching and or word coming forth without being able to hide that seed in prepared soil of the heart. Prepared, meaning tilled. And if I'm not careful, I can get into the actual parable of the sower. And I didn't want to go there just yet. I wanted to talk about the purpose. So the purpose of a parable, I'm in uh, scripture references of Matthew 13, verse 1 through 23, and Mark 4, verse 1 through 20. And as we work through the four different types of soil that's in the parable of the sower, we must keep in mind that the soil referred to is a way of Jesus explaining the condition of our heart. Our heart and the condition that it's in or the state that it's in is how we grow as a Christian. Just like in the case of planting a garden, before we can plant the seeds, we've got to treat or work the soil to be in a condition that will produce growth once you put that seed in there. How many of you garden? I garden a lot. I um, use that as my therapy a lot of times. My favorite time of year is that late spring, early summer, all the way through to like the beginning of August. I love that time of year. I thrive in that time of year. If I had my way, I'd spend, I used to be known for being out late at night, even after dark in my yard, doing things in my yard. I love it when my yard is like perfected. I love um, beautifully outlined flower beds. I love to be creative. Everything for me evolves. It's never a plan that I start out with and have it just stay at that one set plan. 
everything has to evolve. So my yard kind of takes on new form year after year because I'll create a new project or I'll plant something different in one spot versus another, or I decide, oh, I don't want a flat bed anymore here. I want a raised bed. So I'll change that around. This year, I literally got rid of a bunch of lawn and put in a pool because I wanted to play with my grandkids in a pool. So I had to sacrifice part of my yard, but I kept all the floral and the garden at the end of the yard. So literally while we sat in the pool, we could look out and see the beautiful garden growing and I had, you know, red and green and purple peppers while I still had um, uh, lavender growing in the background and tiger lilies over there. And then I had beets and it's just really pretty. And this is what I do. I love it. This year I grew watermelon. I've learned some things. <laughs> Don't let watermelon grow right next to your patio because then they come up on the patio. And when the watermelon grow, they don't do well sitting on the cement. So anyway, um, I learned some things there. But I love to garden. It's It's something I do. So I could really put myself out in the garden while I was learning this parable or the purpose of it. The Bible teaches in many, many, many places on seed planting, then the time that it has to grow, and then the harvest of going out and picking what you've grown. So seed, time, and harvest. Some scripture references are Genesis 8, 22, 2 Corinthians 9, 10, Isaiah 17, 11, James 5, 7, and it goes on and on. God is always, always wanting to plant in our lives or in our hearts. He always wants to plant or put seed in there in order to continue to teach us that as we bear fruit, we grow in him. As that fruit comes to life from the seed that's been planted inside of us, that, that shows growth in us. In the parable of the sower, the, the metaphor is the soil is our heart and the sower is the Holy Spirit. So as the Holy Spirit sows seed in our heart, then we have to be mindful of the condition of our soil, our heart. Just as the farmer who sows the seed has to be mindful of the condition of his ground that he's sowing the seed into. First, we study the purpose. What's the purpose of the parable? And that's how I started this out. In Mark 4.13, Jesus said, do you not understand this parable? Well, then how will you understand all of the parables? And I even take that as to say any of the parables. It could be said, that this is the most important parable. You say, why? Well, because like I said before, in the beginning of this, this parable talks about the ground and how it's prepared to receive what's being planted in it. The ground in that analogy, in that metaphoric way of looking at it is the soil of our heart. The soil of our heart is imperative to comprehend anything and everything that Jesus teaches. We have to be concerned with where our heart is at the time we hear any of uh, Jesus' teaching or what he wants from us or what he wants for us or his authority over us. If we do not have our heart ready to receive that, we will not have something called ears to hear. And that is another thing that's used in this parable. As Jesus was just about ready to go into the parable, he said, for those who have ears to hear, let him hear. What does ears to hear mean? Ears to hear kind of notes the essential need for a teachable hearing heart to be active. Ears to hear would be not literal like, are your ears cleaned out? You know, did are they full of gunk to where you can't hear me speak? No, 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 no. That's not it. Ears to hear is a comprehension level, uh, an understanding level. Jesus wants us to have a mind that's ready to receive 
what he has to say. If we're clogging up our mind with the ways and the things of today or tomorrow, or maybe you just heard from the doctor the other day and you got a bad uh, report. Maybe your finances are in the toilet. Maybe your marriage is hurting right now. I don't know. Maybe you're at odds with your adult children. Maybe you're, um, maybe there's been an unfortunate death in the family and there's grief that's in your heart. All of those things are important. I'm not taking away from the importance of what those things represent or what they can cause in your life or, um, you know, the thoughts that come from them, but it more speaks to like a preoccupation. Do we have ears to hear when we sit down to read God's word? Do we, can we set aside the preoccupation of the things of this world? And can we focus on our understanding and being able to receive what God has to say? If you did a word study on ears to hear, note some scriptures and your thoughts on them, you know, explain down on paper what it means to have ears to hear, and you will receive that a little bit more. I, that's a, I don't know, call it a homework, call it a challenge. I don't know. But ears to hear is really important. And the purpose of this parable is super important to understand because Jesus wanted us to know that parables are used to bring out a spiritual truth, to reveal it in a different way, to make us think about what we know or think about what we don't know. Ears to hear is imperative for that because we have to have an open understanding and a ready to be able to receive mind and heart to where it goes. It doesn't just stop at the head in the mind. If you could see me right now, I'm pointing at my head and goes, from the head and drops down to the heart and now I'm pointing at my chest. So we got to go from head to heart in order to be able to receive what Jesus has to say to us. I'm going to stop there. That's my dish on a purpose or the purpose of this parable, purpose of any parable and what Jesus has to say about this parable. And next we're going to get into the parable. So let me pray. Let me pray us out. And I invite you to come back and partake in this. This is going to be a great study. I guarantee you. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for the word. Lord, I pray that they didn't hear me, God. They didn't hear my words. They need to hear from you. And Lord, I pray that you would even instill in me what I need to know as well, along with any other listener that's out there. God, give us ears to hear. Let us be open to your word, Lord. Help us, God, as we step forth and say, Lord, I want to hear and I want to receive. I pray, God, that you would give us the wherewithal and the, and the strength to do so. In Jesus' name. Now, I pray that even the smallest seed of this message goes deep, deep, deep into the prepared soil of your heart and it plants itself and it brings forth life and life abundantly. I'll see you next time. God bless.